Welcome to this SEO Library online tutorial, More Than Just Genealogy, Fold 3. Fold 3 is a great resource to discover and share historic military documents and can be used to learn and share the story of the veterans in your family tree. It was first launched in 2001. It had a different name, but then it was acquired by Ancestry in 2010. In 2011, it was rebranded and renamed to Fold 3, and the Fold 3 name comes from the flag folding ceremony. Now, Fold 3 provides convenient access to military records such as service records, enlistment records, unit records, their stories, photos, personal documents of the men and women who served. So let's go and look at the Fold 3 homepage. To get to Fold 3, you can access it through your library's online catalog homepage. In the bottom of the page, click on the Discover More link, which opens up all of the databases that we have subscribed to. And I'll scroll down to Fold 3. I'm going to increase my size there just a little bit. So a couple things to look for here on the home page. Over on the right, you can see the number of total records that they have. And the more you come in this, you're going to see that number is going up because they continually add records to this database. Also in the carousel here, there is the Fold 3 Training Center. And let me just click on that. It has a lot of different tutorials, information, tips on searching. I'm on the search button here from the left. And you can scroll down. It kind of explains what you see in your results pages, how you can filter. You can also get tips for browsing. and viewing, how to view your documents, what you can do within those documents. Another thing that I really like, which has some really good video tutorials, is this. The in-depth learning and finding your military veteran on Fold 3. Ancestry Academy is a, a website where you can go. You have to register. It's free to be able to see the full content of the videos, but they have some really excellent material. So you may want to check that out and get registered there. Now I'm going to go back to the home page. Now you can search directly from the home page. You can enter your name or a keyword here. Or you can scroll down a little bit and you can browse the military records by war or conflict. But let's talk about basic searching first. And I'm actually going to click on the search tab at the top. So on the search page, you can enter in your family member's name and just do a, a basic search. You can also click on the Advanced button. And with the Advanced, you can put in more information, some keywords, maybe a place or a location, maybe where they had served and limit it to date. One thing that I kind of liked about the advanced searching, when you put your terms in, those matching terms may come from the indexing of the image or from annotations added by members. So maybe there were notes added about a certain picture, or maybe it listed the names of the people in the photograph. 
We also suggest that if you don't get the results you're looking for, to try broadening your search and maybe removing some of those terms and maybe those dates that you've put in. It's almost like searching in workflows. If you don't find something one way, try to search it another way. You can also use quotation marks around a term. So if I was doing, um, for instance, I really wanted just John Hancock, then I can put it in quotes and it will make that more of an exact search. You could also do the Washington Monument, Iwo Jima. maybe even ship names. Okay. All right, well, let's look at the browsing page. Now, over on the left, if I scroll down, let me scroll my whole page, you can see here are the different categories, which these are listing the conflicts, and then if I select a conflict, then I will see the different publication that are listed there. All right, I'm going to look at World War One. And you can see then the different publications where we could browse. The one that kind of caught my eye were the FBI case files. So if I click that, you'll go over and you'll see the different series that there were. Now, the, the FBI case files they cover important investigations by the FBI during World War I. They include tales of espionage, case files for German aliens who were politically suspect, and reports dealing with alleged violations of federal laws. Some of them were very serious, and some of them were a little far-fetched. Some of them that I looked at were um, a neighbor was reporting that their acquaintance had said that they wished that all the U.S. ships would sink. And they contacted the police, who contacted the FBI, who then filled out this report. Let me just see if I can click. I think it was in the German files or miscellaneous. Let's just take a look here at Red Hawkins. And there is our document. And we can open that up. Now let's see if we can get this any more clear. So this took place in Del Rio, Texas, and it had to deal with ammunition smuggling. So, wow, and this is amazing because I'm a beekeeper, so of course I'm going to pick up on this word. Kenneth Hawkins, representing the G.B. Lewis Company, distributors of beekeeping supplies in Watertown, Wisconsin, reported to me this morning that he was attending a meeting of the Texas Beekeepers Association and had a room at the Gunter Hotel. This morning at 8 o'clock, he was told there was a long-distance call for him. He answered the call, and the party speaking to him said he was sorry, but he couldn't get up yesterday, but he got his telegram about those cartridges. Hawkins knew at once there had to have been a mistake. So anyhow, you can kind of get an idea here of some of that information that's there. I'm going to hit my back button. And then to navigate back and forth, within the browse windows. You'll see here was the page that we were reading 
here are the case files, here's the series, and then I can use this arrow to go back to see my publications, back again to see my category. Then if I want to, I can always change category quite easily. Another one here that I thought was really interesting was from World War II. And it was the Hess Crown Jewels Court Martial. So I clicked on that. And then you can see defendant. Hmm. So David Watson, Jack Durant, and Kathleen Nash Durant. I wonder what this is about. So I went and did a little bit of a history investigating on Google about the Hess Crown Jewels. And I found out that in Germany during the years of World War II, three American soldiers committed one of the most infamous jewelry heists in all of history. What had happened was the jewels belonged to Princess Margaret of the family Hess, who was the daughter of then the German Emperor Frederick. At the time, the jewelry was believed to have a value of over $2.5 million. So in October of 44, they secretly placed their jewel collection into a box lined with lead and zinc, and they buried it in the basement of the Kronberg Castle. The box was lowered into a hole, and then they sealed it with concrete. Well, after burying the jewels, they planned to return um, after the war and retrieve them. Well, in comes Watson and Durant and Kathleen Nash. They discovered that patch of freshly poured concrete and were kind of interested, so they dug it up. They found the jewels. They started selling them off. They sold them in Italy, Switzerland. The jewels themselves, they split because they knew they wouldn't be able to sell like a full bracelet or a full um, ring or a tiara. So they removed the stones themselves and sold them separately. After the war ended in 1946, they were getting ready to have a wedding, the Hess family was. They wanted the crown jewels returned then they discovered that they had been stolen. So here's where some things really got kind of interesting to me and gave it a more of a, a personal account about some of these soldiers. David Watson, I believe, was a major in the Army. And so if I click on David Watson, we have document types here. We have correspondence or we have the record of the trial. And I clicked on correspondence, and I clicked on volume 7. And I, I kind of just skipped around here, but I went to page 9. And I found <clears throat> he had already been sentenced. And this actually is a letter from one of his neighbors asking for clemency. He and his family has been a friend of my family for many years and are known by us to be beyond reproach in every way. David, we have known for 16 years, he having been a fellow traveler with us to Japan and the Orient. And that was sent by Jesse McGregor. And then... On the next page, you'll see that the um, that the military sent a reply to her and said, I assure you that final action will be taken on Major Watson's court-martial only after thorough and impartial consideration by the reviewing authorities. Your comments on a matter of interest to the War Department are appreciated. So I just kind of imagine this woman, um, a little neighbor living next door to his family, maybe even a little house coat, writing this letter. And the next one I thought was really interesting too 
and I'm going to scroll up so you can see the letterhead. The Ghirardelli Chocolate Company, are you guys familiar with that? The man who wrote this was the great-great-grandson of Dominic Ghirardelli, who started the Ghirardelli Chocolate Company. And he also wrote a letter on behalf of Major Watson. And if I scroll down, you can see his name was Sidney Lawrence, Jr. So it's just kind of interesting some of the things that you find there when you're browsing. I'm going to go back to our home page. So I know we've titled this webinar series, you know, More Than Just Genealogy. Because there are some other things here that you can find that could be used if you're doing research on a certain person, maybe not someone that's in your family, or just if you have some interest in certain conflicts. Like I'm really interested in the Civil War, and I really like to look at some of the things that they have there. There are letters, some diaries, pictures that are really interesting to look at. The other great thing about Fold 3 is that you can create a memorial for one of your family members. And you'll see over on the right here, here's a featured memorial of the day, Anthony Thompson. And if I click on his name or his picture, it would take me to his own personal memorial page. Let me go directly to the memorial tab at the top. There are three different memorial walls. We're going to look first at the U.S. Honor Wall. Now, over on the left, you'll see that carousel keeps scrolling. And these are people who have accounts or have, um, not necessarily an account, but a memorial created for them. So here's James Hall, who was a Civil War veteran. And the pictures will just change on their own. I really don't have to hover to make it change. Now, what is scrolling are all conflicts. So over in the middle, you see that I could click Revolutionary War. And you'll see my pictures on the left have changed. And those are memorials for Revolutionary War soldiers. Same with Mexican-American War, Civil War. And I can scroll farther to get World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, the Gulf War. <clears throat> Afghanistan, Iraq, and other services. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm going to cough here just real quick. I'm going to mute myself. So with these memorial and honor walls, you can combine records that you find on the site with what you have in your own albums and shoeboxes to create an online memorial for someone who served. So to view a certain memorial, you can click on any of those photos, like I said, or you can search their name. So here's one I wanted to show you that seemed to have quite a bit of information in it. James Kigwin? Oh, I must have spelled it wrong. K-E-I-G-W-I-N. All right, we're going to do another one. My apologies. I wonder why those aren't coming up. Maybe because I haven't signed in. Let's try member login. I had to create a login to create a memorial.
Now let's try that again. Okay. Here we go. Here's James. So you see we have a photo of James. And right in the middle here, we have summary, facts, stories, and gallery. I can also scroll down, and you're going to see where he was from. He's from Indiana. He served in the Army. He was in the 49th Infantry, the FNS Company. And there's actually a picture of his tombstone. And here's a story about him. which I thought was really kind of interesting because during this one fight, his horse was shot several times, and it threw him off the horse. And at first they thought that he was dead, but he lived. But he injured his back. He was paralyzed for a while, but he never fully recovered. Later in life, he filed for a pension. And we could probably go and find the recording of the pension that he received. Let me scroll back up. If I click on facts, then I get a listing of when he served. And you can click these and they'll drop down. So he was a colonel when he was discharged. We saw the stories page in gallery. So we can click on this picture. That was just his index card. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, let's go back and we're going to search for this other serviceman. And this was John Arthur Page, who served in Vietnam. And you'll see, it, I really like the pictures that they had here, too. They had the picture of his tombstone, but they also have his name on the Vietnam Wall Memorial. You can look there and see um, the different information about when he started his service what branch he was in. So, what if you want to create a memorial? Well, first you would start off by searching for your loved one's name. Okay, and it says here that they couldn't find uh, my relative here, Howard McKinley Bates. So do I want to add him to the honor wall? I would just click Add Now. Now, I kind of recommend if you search and you realize, okay, they're not in here and I want to create a memorial wall, kind of do your research ahead of time. Maybe write down or jot down when they were born, when they died, if, what military history you know. Or maybe collect some of those pictures and have them scanned. You can always add them later. But especially when you're first starting the memorial, you might want to have some of that information right at hand. Then I could put a description in. And if I click Create Memorial, then I would add yeah, whether or not they served in the military, who they served for, what conflict, any other information that I knew. You can decide who can contribute to this page, whether it's just you or anyone else could add to it. And then as you go searching, through Fold 3, you can add to this memorial. Let me just bring up one of our buttons here. 
let me just go back and browse. I just want to show you a nice, easy way, maybe. <laughs> okay, when I have someone's name up, and maybe it was a record that I found from Howard McKinley, because I've seen his, his grave registration card. I think I've seen his draft card. Over here on the right, there are the, the tools, and you could click Add to Memorial. So if you already have your memorial wall created and you find a new picture or you find a new document relating to your veteran, you can click Add to Memorial. And then if I created an existing memorial, then I could click Add. So any questions on that? What do you guys think that you'll use this for? Is there anything that you think you want to investigate a little bit farther? They also have documents um, on the Holocaust, which I would really like to explore more. Well, I thank you guys for coming. Our next class is going to be October 11th at 2 p.m., and we're going to dive in deeper to Heritage Quest. We'll get more of a look at the Find a Grave database, and I'll give you a little bit more of the history of my great-grandfather, Howard McKinley Bates. Okay, everyone, thank you so much, and have a great day.